chapter 3 and verse 16. Do you guys have that scripture? Say it one more time with me if you will for the reading of the word of the Lord. I know you're comfortable, but I'm going to keep you going here. Keep, keep moving. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16. If you're there, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Alright, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching and rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. I want you guys to read this part with me, if you will. Read it out loud. All Scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching and rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Father, thank you for this word today. I ask you to make this word, Lord, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Give somebody a big high five before you see it beside you. There you go. All Scripture is God-breathed. I like what it says there. Think about that. God-breathed. All Scripture. When you're holding your Word, I pray that your Word doesn't collect dust, but I pray that it's become life to you in the next 40 days. I'm, it's my prayer as your pastor and as your friend that this Word will become life to you. Everybody say life. Life. life to you, that, that, that you would actually become acquainted with the Word. That it's more than just, just a, a cover of, 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 of something in, inside, of something that you kind of have uh, in your possession, but it's something that becomes part of, of who you are. All Scripture is God-breathed. That, that, that word God-breathed in the Greek is theo, meaning God, and, and the second part of that means breathe. So it's God-breathed. The Bible is, is God-breathed. So what does that mean? Some of your translations translate the scripture as inspired. It's the inspired word of God. But if I could talk to you about it being God breathed right now, you're, you're listening to the breath of Pastor Steve. You're listening to the breath of Pastor Steve because what, what my voice is doing is his breath is coming over my vocal cords, vibrating those vocal cords, and coming out as a sound. When you speak, your, the breath is coming through your throat, your vocal cords, and it's making a sound when you speak. And so the breath of Steve Pittman is the word of Steve Pittman when I speak. It is the voice of Steve Pittman when I speak. And, and the Bible says that God's word is God's very breath. Think about that. When he speaks to you, when you read the word of God, it's like he's breathing his word to you. He's speaking to you. Isn't that exciting? But that God's speaking to your heart. It's not just an idea, but it's God's word for us for this day and this hour. And as a result of that, Psalm 119 tells us that all your commands can be trusted, O oh Lord. All your commands. Everybody say all. all. All your commands can be trusted, O oh Lord. Everything in the Bible can be trusted as true because it comes from God. It's one thing for the Bible to claim that it's the Word of God, but and it's one thing for the Bible to say you can be trusted, that it can be trusted. But how do I really know that, Pastor Steve? How do I really know I can trust the Word of God? How do I know it's not just a bunch of fables or a bunch of stories that are put together? That it's a valid, legitimate uh, it's the Word of God. And that's an important question we need to ask ourselves. How do I know I can trust the Bible? How do I know this, that it's true and it's for today? Time Magazine thought this was such an important question. It put it over its cover twice. Here's the cover of Time Magazine that said, How true is the Bible? It's a good question. Another cover of Time Magazine said, Is the Bible fact or fiction? We've seen other media stories, even our local news does stories on prayer, the power of prayer. There's the Bible uh, true for today. So we're going to look the next 40 days, starting off today, that the, that the word on inspiration, how can I trust this Bible? How can I get to know this word that is for me? Uh, A.W. Tozer said, what comes to our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Let me say that again. What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Why can I trust the Bible? I want to give you a, a couple things you can think about here right here. Why can I trust the Bible? Number one, I can trust the Bible because, because I, I, I should assume nothing. How can I learn to trust the Bible? I must know His Word. Everybody say, I must know His Word. I must know His Word. To learn to trust His Word is to know His Word. First thing I learned about the Bible was Jesus loves me, this I know. For the what tells me so? The Bible tells me so. I learned that Jesus loves me. And I learned, well, who is Jesus? Why do I need Him to love me? Why do I need God to love me? And I learned that without His love, without Jesus, I was a sinner. Without Jesus, I was 
if I was, I was going to... I wasn't going to go to heaven. I was going to go to an eternal damnation. I was going to go to hell because of sin in my life. And I thought, how did I have sin in my life? Because we're born into, into, into sin. The Bible says that, that, that all have sinned and fallen short of what God has for them. It says, but the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, Jesus Christ, is what? Eternal life to all those who receive Him. So, so the, the Bible, I must know His Word. To understand God's Word, I need to know about the nature of God. I need to understand who God is and the nature of God. And, and one way to understand God's nature it is to know the names of God. It's, it's to know how, how God's viewed in His Word. The names of God used in the Bible kind of act like a road map, map, if you will, for learning about the character of God. And since the Bible is God's Word for us, His God-breathed voice breathe His breath on us, the names He chooses in Scripture are meant to reveal His true nature for us. And I just want to remind you of some, of some names of God. Can we do that together right now? Uh, Yahweh, or, or Jehovah in the Hebrew, translated as Lord. It's found more often in the, New, in the Old Testament than any other name of God. Although some pronounce uh, uh, it's Jehovah or Yahweh, scholars really don't know what the proper pronunciation is. Yahweh comes from the Hebrew verb to be. And God is to be. And it's a special name that God revealed to Moses at the burning bush. Remember that story? And God said to Moses, I am. Or to be. I am who I am. Whom I am. He, he said, he said you, shall, you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent, you, sent me to you. This is my eternal name. And this is how I am to be recalled for all generations in the book of Exodus. You'll find that. To know the word is to trust the word. Therefore, Yahweh, or Jehovah, declares God is an absolute being. That He's a source of everything. Aren't you thankful that in this Word that you hold, maybe you have a pocket in your, a pocket in your Testament you carry with you, or you have a Bible in your home or at your, your workplace, aren't you thankful that it's God-breathed and it's the God who, who, who knows you? It's the God who, who, who is this Jehovah God. He's the, he's the Yahweh God. He's the absolute being. He's the source for everything. In this Word is the source for everything. You can trust in this word as a source for everything without beginning or without end. Here's some names of God. Yahweh Elohim. He's the Lord God. He's the Lord God. He, he is God. Genesis chapter 2 verse 4. I'm also thankful that it's for, for Jehovah Makadesh. It's the Lord who makes holy. Because He is holy, we become holy. Because He is righteous, we can, we can pray in Jesus' name for His, in His righteousness. Another word that we love to, to, to worship God is, is Jehovah Yara, is the Lord who sees, who provides. He is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my banner. I love that we worship the way we do here at Coast Guard. I hope you enjoyed the worship today a little bit more than we usually do, a little bit more music because we're celebrating together all God's goodness to us and worshiping Him. I love to wave the banner of the Lord. We come together, we lift up high the banner of the Lord. We lift up the name of Jesus. Amen? And He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So we lift the banner of the Lord. We lift it high. We wave those flags of worship and praise. We, we, we declare Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my banner. And I love Jehovah Shalom. He is your peace. He is your peace. When his, his name is Shalom. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of peace. How many need more peace in your life? And trust in His Word and trust to get to know the character of God. I love Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord, our righteousness. The Lord is our righteousness. Jehovah Osenu, the Lord, our maker. He is the maker of all things. And Jehovah Rapha is the Lord, our healer. How many have experienced God healing, healing your life, healing your body? Aren't you thankful for Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer? So these are ways we get to know His words. We learn the names of God. To learn His character and who He is. I can trust the Bible. I must know His Word. I need, I need God to, 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 to be these things in my life. How many need God to be those things in your life? Your healer, your peace, your righteousness, your, your all in all, your maker. Time is running out. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. And all of us know someone who is without Christ. He's calling us to, to know His Word. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16, Paul wrote, Woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. It's our responsibility to know His Word. But to make us 
smart Christians in churches and fill up these buildings is not really what it's all about. To make us Christians, to make us useful for effectiveness and service unto Him, to let other people know that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's what it's all about. Amen? Amen. To preach the gospel. We love missions here around Coastal Harvest, and I'm thankful that over the last 10 years we've been able to, to, to support many missionary families. Matter of fact, one of our first services we had, um, we began our first day, we, we said we're going to support missions here at this church. We began to take up a missions offering. And we also began to take up offerings for, uh, for a future uh, uh, building of our own, to plant our own church and, and build our own building. And we began to support missionaries, and I believe God's honored that through the years. And I'm uh, one of the great missionaries of our Sinners of God uh, ministry uh, from Calcutta, India. His name was Mark Buntane. He probably never read leadership books from Maxwell or others, but he was just driven for souls, and he had a passion for God. When you have a passion for God, and you want to do something exciting for God, God, you have a, a drive about you to reach souls, it's amazing how God will bless and God will show up. Listen, when you look around this building today, when you walk around and see the facilities, listen, it, this, just, it just didn't happen overnight. It was because a group of people trusted in a God that they knew. It was God, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And we said, Lord, we'll meet in the school as long as you want us to, but we would really like to have a place of our own. And God just began to pour out blessings on us after one, after another. Amen? Amen. We, we learned to trust in His Word and to trust Him. We are, we are responsible that we should assume nothing. I must know His Word. Not just because someone told me it was true. Not just because pastor preached about it. But because, because I want you to get to know His Word. Secondly, I must accept His Word. Everybody say, I must accept His Word. Because I have the assurance of grace. You say, Pastor, why don't you accept His Word? Because He wants to give you blessings. He wants to give you His grace. Be confident to know the work of God and what He's done in your life. And be confident that He's done that work in you and you're confident to share it with others. How many has been forgiven today because of Jesus' love? You've been forgiven of your sins. You've been forgiven of your past. Be confident of that. And be confident to share that with others. Let them see that in your life. Be confident that He has forgiven you. That we can be completely free from all guilt and condemnation of our sins. If, we, if that's true for us, then we have an obligation to tell someone that we know about this changing opportunity. That, that what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Aren't you thankful for the blood of Christ? God has not only asked that, but commanded us to tell the lost, the, the de church, the, the, the unchurched, about His pardon, about His grace, about His forgiveness. And we must proclaim it to this, un, this, to this city, to this area, to the low country, our community, our friends, and our family, that there is an answer, and His name is Jesus. John 4, 35 says, Do you not say four months more, and then the harvest? He says, I tell you, open up your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Early on, we were trying to decide a name for our church. And uh, I said, Lord, we want to reach lost people. Help us to, to do that. Help us to do that. We began to explore names. The core team began to explore names. And you know what? We said there's a harvest down there on the coast. There's a harvest in the low country. And we're, we're going to be the church on the coast. The church is a harvest. And we just put that together. And that's why we're called Coastal Harvest. Because we believe there's lost people to be reached. See, Pastor, where do you mean my lost people? I'm talking about people that are separated from God. They don't know God. They're separated from this Word. They don't know what God's Word says. They don't understand the things of God. We, it's up to us as His church to let people know who God is. So we've got to know His Word. We've got to trust His Word. We've got to accept His Word. And I must understand that there's, there's a field of harvest ready to be, to be explored, to burn, to be able to work, go out and work. God is saying to you and I, look at the fields. Look at your neighbor say, look at the fields. Look at the fields. We have the answer to the world's cry, amen? And His name is Jesus. I said His name is Jesus. We have the answer to the businessman who has come to a place where there seems to be no real substance or meaning in his life. And his name, the name is Jesus. We have an answer to the woman who feels no one really knows her or what she's going through. And she feels all alone with no hope. And the answer is Jesus. We have the answer for the young person who's trying to find purpose. And wonders that tomorrow holds a better day for them. And they come here on Wednesday nights. And we're telling them that there is one man that can change your life. And his name is Jesus. I'm so thankful we have that in place on Wednesday nights to reach the young people in this community. Amen? Yeah. 
And we have, we have an answer for that, that person who is trapped in a cycle of drug addiction. And his name is Jesus. We have a circle, an answer for the elderly person that feels no one cares about them. Without, they're without friends or family. But we do know a Savior and His name is Jesus. We have an answer for the broken homes. We have an answer for the broken people. We have an answer for the sick and the dying. And His name is Jesus. We have an answer for the one who has it all, but yet was without Jesus and is heading for eternal hell. And His name is Jesus. We at Coastal Harvest Church. We are the church of Jesus Christ, and we should always point the way to Jesus. You see, I must know His Word. I must accept His Word, and I must proclaim. Everybody say, proclaim. I must proclaim His Word. I must tell others about this Word, this knowledge of God's redemptive plan that God's given to me. The Apostle Paul in the Bible, he was constantly, continually, and sacrificially Day and night, week in and week out, into the highways, hedges and byways. Everywhere he went, the mountains, the streets, he was always seeking the lost. That's what we're about here at Coastal Harvest Church. To seek the lost. To seek those who are unchurched, who are, who are, who are disillusioned by church. I love our church because there's nobody perfect here. Amen? Amen. That's right. We're, just, we're all projects in process. We're all journeying together. We're all working together. We're all learning together. We're learning about God's grace and about His goodness and we're wanting other people to come alongside of us and do the common thing He's called us to do to reach the lost for Him. It's our responsibility to proclaim it with our lives. But there is an answer and His name is Jesus. There was a young man walking through the city streets in a large city one day. And uh, he heard some beautiful church bells playing or something, some beautiful music. And he walked up to these large steps and he saw this big, beautiful brick building. And, and the young man, a little boy, walked up and he, he wanted to go inside and hear this beautiful music he heard. And he started to walk through the doors of, of what was a church and begin to walk through those doors. And all of a sudden, the big hand grabbed him by the, by the collar and said, Sir, you can't come in here like that. You see, he was a, he was a homeless child. He was dressed in, in shattered clothes, tattered clothes, and, and he was kind of undone, put together, and, and man, then he come out and sat back on the porch and said, you're not allowed to come in here that way. And the little boy began to cry because he didn't understand why they wouldn't let him in that building to listen to beautiful music. And then along walked Jesus, saw him crying, sat down beside him, and said, young man, why are you crying? The little boy looked at Jesus and said, sir, they won't let me in that building. And he just looked at him with a smile and said, Don't worry, son. Who won't let me in either? This church, we let Jesus in here. Hallelujah. We're real people with real answers for real problems. That's the way we began. See, well, we're not, we just want to be another church just to do church and have a building and if that's, what, if, I, if that's what this was about, I'd be gone a long time ago. This church is different. We're here to do the work that God's called us to do. To reach the lost. To go out into the harvest and say, Lord, we're coastal hearts. We're going to reach a harvest for you. We want you to join in the journey with us. Come in here with us and help us find what you love to do for God. And we want to put you to, to, to in action. We want you to be a good soldier for the Lord. We want to help you and learn, help you learn about the things of God. We want to help you learn the Bible. That's why it's so important that you learn the Word of God. But see, I, I, must, I must learn, I must know His Word. I must accept His Word so I can get to know who He is. And I must proclaim His Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to have the praise team come back up and we're going to, we're going to do a song that simply says, God, we're praying that you will be God in this city. Why, why Coastal Harvest Church? Why, why 10 years of ministry in the low country? Because we must proclaim His message. We can't stop proclaiming that message in the midst of a people who serve and worship many gods. How I many you know people in the low country worship many gods? <laughs> All around the world. We know the true God. There are people who, who you know right now who do not know who God is. They could possibly spend eternity apart from God and wouldn't what the Bible calls a place of burning fire. So what are you going to do about that? What are you going to say about that? Pastor, I've tried it before. It seems like I can't get through to him. Jesus said that, he said, throw out the net again and try again. 
I tell you guys, over the last 10 years, we've had some ups and we've had some downs. And on the down times, Pastor Steve spent like throwing the net over the side of the boat, so I'm, I'm tired of trying. But that still small voice in me says, throw the net on the other side and keep trying, so I ain't like done with you yet. And so I take the net, I throw it on the other side, and we start catching fish again. <laughs> and we, we, we've been plugging along, we, we, may, we haven't given up, and we're not going anywhere, guys. God's got a plan for us, He's got a plan for this church, and you're part of something exciting, a part, of, part of something God's doing right here in the low country, and I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. Can we all stand to our feet right now? Let's just begin to believe God for greater things than we've ever experienced before in our lives.